interesting, but I want you to consider for a second. Take your favorite artists, take all the pop music. You can take Jimmy Buffett, Ed Sheeran, uh, Taylor Swift. Do we have any Buddy Holly fans in the room? Buddy Holly's way back in the day. And if you ask, if you lived your life according to your, that music, would you go to hell? That is, what is the consequence for living a sinful life? It's to go to hell, right? And, this, and sometimes you have to ask yourself, does that trigger you? Does that thought of the idea of hell? That is, that if you commit, the saints would say that you could go to hell for just one mortal sin. That is, if you have one mortal sin and you haven't repented of it, and you haven't sought forgiveness for that, now through confession primarily, but we say if confession's not available, sorrow for sins is sufficient uh, before, before death. If you die with just one mortal sin, you could go to hell for all eternity. It's fascinating. We start to get at, when we understand the reality of hell, we start to understand the radicalness of God's mercy. So we see, we see like these Jimmy Buffett songs or Taylor Swift songs, right? What's the big deal? He's just kind of partying. So he has like five or 10 girlfriends throughout five or 10 years. And maybe he has a few flings, but he's just young and having fun. No real big deal. No, nobody gets hurt. And of course, you know, as you get older, that's not necessarily true, right? That Jimmy Buffett type character, as much as it's fun in a song, and I like Jimmy Buffett, that's why I'm talking about it. I like his music. You realize that people like that, they leave a trail of destruction behind them. Sin is never completely isolated. That is, we're all connected. And even some things that we do in private have effects on all of those around us. So there's a sense that in God in his justice holds us accountable and for the hurt that we've done. And then we look at today's gospel and we look at this idea, we've heard it so many times, right? You can just gloss over it and we kind of idealize it, right? And like in the movies, prostitutes and tax collectors. And we think, oh, Jesus is so nice. But we don't realize the scandalness of that mercy. I want you to think about this for a second. Ladies, put your thinking hat on for a second. If there was a woman in this town that had slept with all of your husbands, maybe destroyed a few marriages, right? Left behind her a series of disasters. Imagine you had a friend, because we all know this type of person, right? They spend their last dollar. Instead of on Friday, when they get their, they get their money, they go to the bars. It's, I've heard these stories hundreds of times. They go to the bar, they get drunk. They spend their money on the prostitute. Well, meanwhile, wife and kids are at home and they don't have food. They don't have, bill, they don't have the money to pay the bills. And if that woman came through here and wanted to be a part of this parish, and everybody saw that. And imagine, Jesus says, this woman can be my disciple. Holy cow, that's crazy. That's intense, right? And the, imagine the hurt, and imagine the thoughts that go. This is at the heart of today's first reading. Jesus, how can you be so loving to her who's destroyed so many marriages, who's hurt so many people? How can you be merciful to her? When I pay for the Bishop's Annual Appeal every year, right? I give to the collection. I volunteer, I'm involved with the parish, I'm a catechist, and now this woman is gonna be praised? This woman who's destroyed so many lives? Take it up a notch, think about tax collectors. Have you ever seen those movies about World War II? If you know what happened when the American army started liberating France, is you know that there were Nazi collaborators. That is, there were people who made a lot of money off of hurting people, quite literally, right? They would turn people in, they would snitch, they would turn to the SS, they'd get people killed. That's what tax collectors are. So imagine Jesus walks into France during World War II, and he says, I'm here to set you free. Oh, and by the way, that Nazi collaborator is now your brother in Christ. That Nazi collaborator, you saw when he turned somebody in and they were tortured and they were killed, and now I am merciful on him. That's the scandal of God's mercy. That's the radicalness of it. And again, we would say, Jesus, don't you care about how much evil this person has done? How this person has destroyed lives? That's what tax collectors did. They extorted money from people. They got rich off of the back of others. This wasn't just some person begging on the side of the street. No, this was a person who had done great evil. And he takes one of them, Matthew, and he makes him his apostle. He makes him great. He bestows his graces upon him. 
and leads them to the path of holiness. This is the scandal of God's mercy. So what is the problem with the Pharisees and the scribes? They're like so many of us, that when the tax collector walks through, the Nazi collaborator walks through, the person who's destroyed marriages, the, all those people, when they walk through the door, we say, how dare they? How dare they approach this altar? How dare they ask for forgiveness? That is the scandal of God's mercy. And do you want to know what the key is? We're just like the tax collectors and the sinners and the prostitutes. If you examine your heart, there go I but for the grace of God. We love to make ourselves think that we're so much better than all those people. All those people. All those people who do terrible things. We would be different. I, I love Jordan Peterson. It's a great lecture. He says, most of us would have been Nazis in the time of Germany. We love to think we wouldn't have been. No, we would have stood up. We would have been so much more courageous. But the humility to say, there go I but for the grace of God. And let that mercy soak in. Because when we no longer hide that, when we recognize we have great evil within, Christ looks on us with tenderness and mercy. He looks on the tax collector. He looks on the prostitute. He looks at the person who lives their life like a Jimmy Buffett song or a Taylor Swift song. He doesn't say, I don't care about what you've done. I don't worry about that. No, he says, I forgive you. And he, we ask him for forgiveness. We say, Lord, I need you. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I am a sinner in need of your mercy. That is freeing. That is liberating. That is the power of God's mercy. So today, let us meditate on that. How much we've been forgiven. Let us run to confession. Let us run to devotion. Let us plead God's mercy to open our hearts more and more so that we can be like those who have ch changed their lives and be renewed. That is the path to true happiness, to realize how much you have been forgiven. Amen.